Welcome to the Waterbrook. We are a family and we are called to love God, love people, serve society, rebuild our country, and change the world. We're a growing community of believers and our vision is to set a generation on fire for God. Our mission is to help people have a personal relationship with God, find destiny, fulfill purpose, and experience a breakthrough in every area of life. We're confident that whether you're a member, worker, or this is your very first time, you will have a mind-blowing, spirit-filling, life-changing experience with God, and you will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. So please don't just sit there and stare. Engage, and don't just press play. Participate, open your mind from the start. Worship God from your heart. Let him speak to you from his word, and let him heal you wherever it hurts. Your Waterbrook experience starts now.
This is your moment this morning. I just want you to worship God. I want you to exalt Him. Yes, you're in a crowd with people, but it's you and God this morning. Father, we exalt you. Father, we worship you. Oh, Lord God, it's a privilege to stand in your presence. Our hearts are filled with gratitude to you. Oh, we delight to worship you. Unto you, to all glory and honor and adoration be. You alone are worthy, God. You are worthy of all our praise, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. 
This morning, it's an audience of one. I know that you're in a crowd with people, but it's you and Jesus. It's you and God. And I want that to be the focus of your heart this morning as you stand before your maker. The Bible says that unto him shall the gathering of his people be. You have come before I am. You have come before the God who sits on the throne. The one who rules forever. The one who is sovereign over all. The one who says a thing and it is established. The one who speaks and his word comes to pass. Oh Jesus, we worship you Father. This morning I want you to pray for yourself. I don't know if you have come with an expectation this morning before God, but I want you to really settle down and think, what is it you want to get out of service today? Because it's possible to be lost in service. It's possible to come and just, okay, everything just happens and you go and then nothing really impacts your life. I want you to have an expectation from today's service. God, as your word comes, let it change my heart. God, this burden that I've come with, I don't want to live with it. God, I want to encounter you. I want to encounter your word. I want to see you in a new way. Let the light of your word come to me. Help me, Holy Spirit. Lastly, I want us to pray for our hearts. I want us to pray for our hearts. The Bible says that he would give us a heart that is receptive to him. The Bible also makes us understand in Matthew 13 that it is possible for the seed of God's word to be planted and for our hearts to reject it. It's possible that the word of God would come and it will not produce in our lives. But that is not us today. I want you to pray over your heart and say in the name of Jesus, my heart is receptive to everything that is happening in this place. That as the word of God comes, the word of God finds a resting place in my heart. That as the word of God comes, it remains in my heart and it produces in the name of Jesus. I'm giving you a few seconds to pray that prayer over yourself, over your heart. Decree over yourself that you will not go back the same way you came. That as you've come into God's presence, your life will be changed forever. Jesus we thank you father because it's such a privilege to be in your presence there's really no other place we will be we thank you Lord because you're set to do amazing things in our lives today and we thank you because we are connected to everything you're doing today we thank you because we are not distracted we thank you because our hearts are receptive we thank you because our eyes are fixed on you come and have your way in our lives Jesus Come and do a walk in us that will remain, that will span the course of our lives in Jesus' name. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a brook give Jesus a clap of in this morning. God has called us this morning to prophesy. So we are coming to you this morning from the prophetic angle of praise. And I need you to lift up your hands and declare in 2024, I am walking in power. I am walking in victory. Overwhelming victory is mine. Hallelujah. Said I'm walking in power. Yes, I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. 2024. This is our year of the word, the year of manifestation of the word. I need you to clap your hands, shout unto your God, the God whose word is so potent, He can change your lives. Everybody say we are, we are a chosen generation.
told somebody to raise your hands and worship him.
Of your goodness, my God, sing all my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good, so good. With every breath that I am there. breaking out into dance like even with the slow worship I just been dancing I just been dancing I'm just gonna crave your indulgence just for a quick two minutes right as the tech team just do a little bit of work in the back right um, just give us two minutes but during that time see fear what do I mean by that?
of deepening in the word, prophecy, prayer, and best of all, you're able to ask your questions. So this week is going to be virtual. So please um, join in. We want to see everyone um, from the comfort of your, of your home, but also type in those questions. Let's see the emojis, right? Um, and let's dive deeper because today's word is going to be fire. All righty. So um, shout out to all the workers again. I can't, I can't stop saying how much you do for this, this house, this family. Thank you to every unsung hero that is a worker who doesn't ask for where's my thank yous, where's my, you know, coming in all the time. Guys, like, I mean, if we tell you when Freck and some of the guys were here till, right, um, yesterday, we spoke about God is building people, but some people are just special. Some people are just, I just built. I talk about January babies. Ah, uh -uh. they're built now. They're number one. They're the first in the... Uh, I'm kidding. But I am somebody who, you know... Okay, let me just jump to the chase. I'm also a January baby. That's why. All right. But I, wanna, I want to shout out to a couple of people, right? Um, there's somebody in the house who... She's inspiring. She brings down... Should I say, she brings down the glory of God. God lives in her. She's somebody who has spent her time, herself, and really given to TWB. Guys, join me in celebrating and saying a huge happy birthday to P. Nikkei. We love you. Thank you. Thank you for all the sacrifices. Thank you for all that you're doing. You're amazing. Happy birthday. Okay, so since I've, you know, bigged up, if that's a word, right, one of our most special people, right, I can't but big up some other special people. So this person, right, it's somebody that brings, you know, I said that, you know, um, Pinike brings down the glory, right? This is someone that brings down the house. Brings down the roof. You know what I'm talking about when I mention who it is. Guys, please. What should I say we should do now? Let's bring down the roof for our one and only Brenda. Brenda is an amazing so much. So I'm going to move a bit quicker. If it is your birthday, marriage anniversary, or you have a special. Oh my God. Oh my God. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I missed one. I missed one. I missed one. Yeah, joining me for the rest of the. <laughs> woo, 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 woo. All right, guys. Happy birthday. This person is super talented. You're going to be seeing him in a lot of movies this year, right? If you think he's just coming to entertain us here, this is an amazing, amazing man, but more than that, an amazing heart. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, thank you. All right, all right. Okay, so please, so that that does not happen again, right? If you have a birthday, marriage anniversary, you have a special arrival, right, in the family, please let us know, right? Um, we wanna celebrate with you, we wanna big you up. Right, so um, please let Mary or anybody at the end, um, at, the, at the back of the, of the hall uh, know. Um, and uh, we can also give you the, the email for that as well. All right, I, okay, we've got the screen back. All right, so um, just really quickly, we also have, you know, we, we're, we're part of multiple expressions, right? TWB is an expression, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Strength, agility, balance, endurance, coordination, 
defense, endurance, coordination. These are all yours in 2024. Your victory is non-negotiable. This is your time. Time to take on giants and achieve the impossible. Time to be turbocharged with supernatural strength. Ladies, are you ready? The Get So Many Prophetic Prayer Meeting with Pastor Lovett returns in the new year with a special hybrid event. This will be an exceptional combo. We will be live at the Dome Freedom Way Lekki Phase 1, Lagos, Nigeria, and streaming online to our global family. Joining us at this edition is our very own Mrs. Okoyo Rapo, bringing our unique anointing and grace to lead us. Date, Friday 19th, January 2024. Theme, Turbocharged for 2024. This will be explosive, prophetic, and breathtaking. Like Elijah, we will obtain divine speed to outrun every competition. As we pray, we receive strength to run fast, dream bigger, and break limits. Whether in person or tuning in online, this blessing is for everyone. Remember, we will be live at the Dome Freedom Way Lekki Phase 1, Lagos, Nigeria, and streaming live on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Mixilla. It's Friday, January 19th, 2024. Time, 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. West African time. Mark your calendars and spread the word to every woman you know out there. For more details, connect with Get To Many Women through any of the numbers on this screen. Be intentional. Be progressive. Be double charged for 2024. Don't miss it. Um, just a little bit about this. This is just to reiterate, right? Um, this is a huge opportunity, right? As I said last time, um, as we start the year, we want to start it, right? We want to start it built, right? Uh, we want to start it on fire, right? Fire keeps burning, right? Um, it catches fire, and, 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 and even the things next to it start burning, right? And we want that fire to keep on through out the year so please don't miss an opportunity right with pastor Nkoyo Rapo and pastor Lovett Orono we actually have pastor Lovett here with us so please help me in celebrating what they're doing in our lives thank you thank you so much it's going to be an amazing time um there are buses um that are going to be leaving from Surulere and Leki um so if you want or um, if you want to um, take advantage of the bus, please sign up um, at the information desk at the end of the service. Um, take advantage of that. All righty. So, um, and Aja as well, right? Please. Jakonde, Aja, Surulere, Ikeja, and Leki. And Surulere. Okay, that's a lot, guys. Let's, let's, let's take advantage of that. Thank you so much for making that available. Thank you. Um, okay, so I'm not going to say offering time. Maybe I should. Um, but I think that this is such a special time, right? Because God says it is more special to give, right? Why would God say that? God doesn't mince his words. He knows that he wants to give, he wants us to receive, but he's also telling us a secret. He says, let me tell you something. If you really want to receive the things that you want, the secret is giving. Um, it says that in Acts 20, 35, in everything I do, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, you must help the weak. Remember the words of the Lord himself. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Guys, in this year, right, let us give of our time, of our effort, of our commitment, of our resources, right? So let's give as we build this house, right? This house is still in progress, right? God has already gone ahead of us to do an amazing work. We will not believe 
what God has done by the end of this, right? But please, please, please keep giving. If God lays on your heart, right, um, something to give, right, something to do, right, around giving, please, please, please don't sort of shoo it away, right? God will meet you at those needs that you're sort of like, mm, is it God, is it, right? Um, I know I was talking about my Baba, right, and if I'm going to increase what I'm giving him beyond. So, you know, he, he came, you know, and... Uh, yeah, I'm happy to say that I, I increased it even, even, even beyond what I'm doing right now because I know God is doing amazing things. So, um, Heavenly Father, we thank you so, so much for it is more blessed to give. Thank you for revealing, God, um, the secrets that allow us to reign, God. And one of those is giving. And we thank you, God, that you've given us um, uh, bread, God, to, to, to give. Thank you that even from the small or the large that we have, God, God, it is all pleasure to you, God. We thank you that it will be used for your kingdom alone in the mighty name of Jesus. And thank you, God, that you, God, would meet everyone at their point of need, God. God, we pray that you would, um, you would turn that, um, that flour and that oil into a nonstop um, um, flow, God, that will never end for everyone in here in the mighty name of of Jesus. Amen. All righty. Thank you very much. Woo, woo, woo. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. <laughs> Funny enough, last week um, I was having a chat with the um, operations and media team about how much work they've put into this and how I neglected to give them, you know, the thanks that was due. So I'm very happy that Chair, you know, did that for me. And today I was going to get on the stage and thank them, but the devil wants to steal their thanks. But thank you anyway, guys. I appreciate what you guys do. Um, it's been a tedious and continuous work since Monday, and they've been on the money. And I know um, they've all they put their, you know, they put their sweat into this. And I know we'll get through it. These are, these are bed pounds, right? Something great is about to be birthed. The last time I saw this, this type of contention was 2019, crossover service. <laughs> so because I was on PT's uh, protocol team, I had first-hand experience, you know, of the, 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 the way the devil tries to distort the word. So that just tells us that the word we're about to receive today, <laughs> the word we're about to receive today will be so powerful. And it's going to usher us into a new level. The word we receive from God today, uh, this year, is that this year we'll see the manifestation of his every word. His promise to us is that we'll see the potency of his word in action. So I'm very much excited about the word that is going to come today. And I know it's going to be great because of the amount of contention that we have to, <laughs> that we have to surpass, you know, to get that word going. So it's my honor and privilege to introduce our speaker. Our speaker today is a, is a general, but, well, you know, the generals of old, the, the King Davids of old, they used to go to battle with the, you know, with the soldiers. They're in the trenches. You don't see that, you know, today. The generals today... They give instructions from afar. But the man that is coming on stage today is a general of old. He gives instructions and is in the trenches with us, you know, working it out. And that's one of the unique things that Pastor Ronald brings to the body of Christ and, you know, to this house uniquely. You know, he's not just telling you do something. You can actually see him do it. You can actually see him working and, you know, and striving, you know, to ensure that, you know, Especially my experience is, you know, all the work that we've been doing in this house has been very instrumental. You know, just encouraging us, working with us. Where do we need to get money? Let's go, let's go, let's go. We met with him, myself and Pastor Nika, we met with him last week. And he was all like, let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> so I, I really appreciate you, sir. It's a privilege and it's an honor to have you bring this word to us today. Um, I think it's a word that we require in this season. I don't know what it is, but in my heart, I know it's something that is required for the now. Because the faithfulness we've gotten from God from the beginning of this year till now is that every word he gives us is on the money. 
his word has been progressive and they've been apt and they've been addressing issues. So I know that in line with that, he has brought you to add fire to what he has already kindled in us. So Pastor Rono is, um, should I use that word? Pastor Rono is more or less pity when pity is not around. Let me not use, let me not use two IC. Let me, <laughs> let me take over now. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please let's give a standing ovation as we welcome our general. <laughs> what is that? What is that? Those are for the big boys. <laughs> and I was going to be so far. Please sit down. Thank you. Thank you, Shay. All right, so for those who I haven't said Happy New Year to, Happy New Year to you. Wow, the last time I was at the Waterbrook, we were squatting somewhere. And today we're here. Yeah. Maybe you don't know what. That means. I said, maybe you don't know what that means. I said we were squatting the last time. I think that was in August, September. Yeah. And we did say we're moving. You know, there's nothing like speaking the word of God and seeing it come to pass. When we, when we decided on this move, we're not sure where we were going. I, I, in fact, I remember from that service, we came here two days later. That was, oh, that was a Sunday. Then on Tuesday, um, a number of us came here. I, uh, you know, and um, we just said, we've laid our feet on this land. And the Bible says, wherever you lay your feet, you'll possess. Oh, and so we prayed on the land. It was a bush, one big forest. <laughs> In fact, I remember I was telling the ladies, don't go too far. Don't go too far because we didn't want snakes to come out from anywhere, you know. And um, in fact, we didn't know it was this big. It was after they cleared this place out, so I traveled. So Phoenix gave me the pictures of the place, and I was like, amazing. And here we are. If God can do it for TWB, who can't he do it for you? Your case can be different. And why I'm very excited, I, I, I'm just coming from Holy Trinity, and I was explaining, I did explain my personal journey in life. I've always tied myself to projects like this. Whenever the church is moving, whenever the church is growing, I'm always tying myself. I, I don't know what I was, you guys, I told. The first time um, we bought an SUV was because of the dome. I was driving a Honda, I was living in Lekki, but you couldn't get there. I would stop somewhere before where you have Studio 24, then a gentleman will come and pick me with his Range Rover. So I just said, I like this kind of vehicle. It was unstoppable, you know? And um, that was the beginning of the journey of SUVs. And so every step of the way, I was telling them at um, Holy Trinity that I moved to the island because of church, because this present house was meeting at Happy Bank Street, I was always around, sometimes getting back home to Sulay then was a bit late. And, you know, we never thought we could afford living in this part of town. But one way or the other, the Lord just made ways. Things just happened. So I moved house. I moved house and office at about the same time to Victoria Island. And from there, we were unstoppable. So I want you to tie yourself to what's going on. I know it's still very uncomfortable it's okay this is the process you know any christianity without process be very careful about it because see the things of god is line upon line precept upon precept you know and then it begins to go from where glory unto glory that's the word of god and that's the truth um so today i, I bring you a words i bring you a simple word I'm sure some of you did biology and you, have, you will have heard adaptation and you will have heard evolution. So I'm going to use some scriptures in the Bible just to speak. And I'm very, very, very ready for today. I am. 
I am very ready. I don't know about you. Anyone ready for today? When Dot spoke and my dear Shea spoke, they were alluding to something. Pastor Lovell shared something with me a few weeks ago. She said she had a dream where some people couldn't speak. So that means, and if you cannot speak, you have no command. You have no authority. You can't even make demands. Imagine you cannot speak. How do you ask for something? You know, imagine your mouth shut. So the same way, there's one level not to be able to speak. There's another level not to be able to hear. Have you ever sat, every one of us, we complain at the announcers at the airport because we want to hear what they are saying, right? Or even the pilots. We, people make jokes about it all of the times that you really don't hear what they are saying. In fact, we have um, a friend who we met him once at the airport and he had checked in. And so we're waiting. Any announcement he hears, he goes towards the gate. Any announcement he hears, we said, is it that you don't know your flight? He said, no, that he has been here before and missed his flight. Because he doesn't, you don't hear what they're saying. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, flight. Oh, blah, 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 blah. And then you were straining your ears. You enter inside the plane. Then the pilot said, it's captain speaking. They got so much of at your attitude. <laughs> Amen. See the picture. I, I asked them to help me get a picture of the cactus in the desert. You will see one plant alone by itself, still green in the desert. Do we have it? Okay. Yeah, I, I saw it earlier. Still green. But then, why is it surviving and all the other plants are dead? Do you know, a lot of people will be running away from this country but some people will still be making it in this same country. That's God for you. The God that I know, he walks against the odds. That's the God I know, and that's the God I've come to speak about. So, you, if you are against the odds, then you are God's candidate. You are his person. That's the simple message that I have brought to you today. And I titled it, Aha, uh -huh. exactly. Now, just look everywhere. The only things surviving, thriving, this is like a wilderness land, is the cactus. Why is the cactus surviving there? Where is hibiscus? Where is the agbalumo tree? Where is the mango tree? Where is the apple tree? They've all died. They can't survive this. And you're always going to find desert situations all over. Anyone want to defeat the desert situation here today? So adaptation is a process of changing to suit different conditions. It's a process of changing. Um, so I remember once we were in Ireland. My younger brother was in school then. And I was buying a SIM card from one gentleman. And he says, he asked a question. He said, where are you from? I said, Nigeria. He said, ah, that he's been to Lagos once. But unfortunately, he said, unfortunately, it was summer. I said, uh, it's summer all year round. Because he was sweating. He couldn't adapt to the weather. That's what adaptation is. Sometimes we travel abroad, and we have seen some terrible weather conditions. I remember there was a day, I think it was about, um, yeah, it was actually December last two years, 2022. So myself and Pastor Lovett, we had gone somewhere from New Jersey. We went to somewhere called Lancaster. They have this sight and sound. So we went to watch, um, went to watch one of the plays. I think it was on David. Right, yes, I remember it was on David. And, um, you know, so we stayed in Lancaster because our show was for 7 p.m. or thereabout. I can't remember. So we stayed in Lancaster that day. And then the next day, we went on to Philadelphia. So I said, let me get some water we can drink on the way. And I gave her some four bottles of water. And she said, what's this? What's this? Do you know, in less than two seconds, the water was iced. It was minus 27 degrees on that day. But guess what? Oh, I've learned over time how to live in minus 30. And how to live minus whatever. 
Yeah. It's called what? Adaptation. So, like I said, it's a process of changing to suit different conditions. And so, there's a process by which an animal, plant, or species become fitted, F-I-T, to be fit for the environment. So that, like I said, you know, if you understand and you've been able to adapt to any condition, when people are dying, you are thriving. When people are complaining, oh, you are doing well. And so I want to take my scripture this morning from 2 Samuel chapter 23. And I'm going to read verse 20. I'll read verse 1 first so you understand. And then I'll read from 20 to 23. Okay? If you have your Bibles... Please. Oh, okay. We have it on the screen. Now, great. Everyone, please read with me. One, two, go. Thank you. So we want to look at what a dying King David said. King David wrote most of the Psalms. He didn't write all other people. Ezra wrote, Solomon wrote, Moses wrote, um, the sons of Saf wrote. So a lot of people wrote Psalm, but he wrote most of the Psalms. And a lot of the times we're able to identify with the Psalms of David because he was really like any one of us. Psalm 23, for instance, is maybe the most popular Psalm in the world. Everyone understands it. It was David. So such a man, when he is dying, you have to listen to what he's saying. The Bible says that these are the last words of King David. So I'm going to share with you some of his last words. At Holy Trinity today, that I, I spoke from some of his last words, but not this same word. Now let's jump to verse 13. and then we'll, Sorry, verse 20 to 23. Verse 20 to 23. Okay, please read with me again. One to go. And Beniah, son of Jehoiada... A valiant man of Kabzil, who had done many notable acts, slew two lion-like men of Moab. He went down also in a pit and slew a lion in a pit on a snowy day. Please take note of that. That he went into a pit on a snowy day and slew a lion. Verse 20. Yeah, that's verse 20. So 21 says, Yeah. The Egyptian had a spear in his hand, but Beniah went down to him with a staff. Note what he went with. Snatched the spear out of his, the Egyptian's hands and slew the man with his own spear. 23. And the, at the end of these, these things Beniah, son of Jehoiada, did and won a name beside the three mighty men. We can stop there for today. My key verse is actually verse 20 where he said, he went into where? On a snowy day, let me tell you something about the lion. Let's look at it first of all. So let's look at the conditions. We're looking at a lion. We're looking at a snowy day. And then we're looking at what? A pit. What situation can be worse than this? Do you know what a lion is? It's not just called king of the jungle for nothing. The lion with a... The average lion weighs about 550 kg. That's like 11 bags of 50 kg rice. Phoenix, what do you weigh? 39? How can you weigh 39? <laughs> 11 bags of rice. That's the average. Some weigh more than that. That's the weight of the lion. Now, the lion... Share. Do you know that if the lion knocks, just gives you a slap on the head, you know what will happen? The skull will crack. Yeah, that's how powerful the lion is. Guess what? They will tell you, the skull is one of the strongest bones in the body. The only bone that is not hollow in the human body is the kneecap. But if you hit the skull against the kneecap and one has to break, it's the kneecap that will break first. That's how strong the skull is. But the lion with one blow, it will crack it like the way you crack an egg. That's how powerful. And then it can bite through any bone. You know how you, when you're chewing chicken, sometimes some people are very wicked when they eat chicken. 
They are, they, you forget there's bone in chicken. They just eat the flesh and chicken together. That's how the lion can bite through any bone in the human body. That's the lion. That's the person or the animal that Benaiah went to face. The second thing we need to notice is the snow. Look at the conditions. It was a snowy day. And the human feet, you know, at a crossover, I talked about the, to be sure-footed like the deer. Now, one of the things I didn't mention is that the deer has something called a dew claw. So it doesn't use it all of the time, but the one tiny part of, one tiny toe it has, is like when you use auxiliary gear. You know, some of us drive four by four. In those days, um, nowadays it's automatic. You just drive and then it begins to change. In those days, you will have to, there's a different gear that's called the auxiliary gear. That's what engages the four wheels. So the dew claw is what it uses when it's climbing those mountains or a snowy place, you know. It has that. So in terms of who has advantage where they were, it was a lion that had advantage. Number one, that's number two. Then number three, where was all of these things happening? In a pit, pit dot. You know, even if, you know, the, ah, let me even tell you this. If you meet a lion, let me look for someone. What's your name, ma'am? Yes, you. Tell me, tell me, tell me, if you were to meet a lion. Okay, I think I need to move back. I don't lose. Watch which is very natural. Very natural. So what will you do? You run. Mistake number one. Fatal mistake. You cannot outrun the lion. You can't outrun the lion. So why run? But you see, that's what fear does. The Bible says he has not given us a spirit of fear. But of what? sound mind. Once you don't have sound mind, you're going to make mistakes. So running is because of the fear. You don't have sound mind. Because it's like the thing can, I mean how many, how many what's your speed? And the lion is a predator. People think the lion shout at his um, enemy. Oh no, he doesn't. That shouting is maintaining its um, territory. Yes. If the lion wants to come at you, guess what? He's going to sneak at you. That's what, have you seen, what's that channel? Graphic or something? Okay, thank you. It will sneak on you. It's a predator. It doesn't make noise when it's coming. It will outrun any human being, not even Usain Bolt. So for you to start running, mistake and fatal mistake. Because you can't back any of these animals. We're in a crocodile farm once in South Africa. And they were telling us about the crocodile, that it can leap 120 meters. And it's watching you. It has a small brain. It's not so smart, but it's able to calculate your movement. So those who work in the farm, if they pass here today, they won't pass here tomorrow. They'll pass here. That's how, just to confuse it. So they say, if you're running from a crocodile, don't run straight. Go this way. Go that way, just to confuse its brain. Because you run for five seconds, it got in you. It's going to leap at you. That's how these animals are. So here we are looking at lion on a snowy day in a pit. Everything is against you. You have no advantage over the enemy in any of these conditions. That's where Benaiah went. Benaiah is one of my favorite characters in the Bible. I know someone here who is facing a lion right now. The lion is the worst foe that you can face. The snow is that, I mean, the ambient conditions don't favor you. And the pit is the worst place you can be. Everything terrible. It may be health condition, you're facing a lion right now. It may be in your family life, facing a lion right now. So I'm here to tell you something about the man called Banaya, and then how did he win? You know, in military ground operations, they take three major factors into account. One, the strength of the enemy. Two, the terrain, which includes options for mobility and withdrawal. And three, the ambient conditions, bad weather and all of that. So in Benaya's case, 
all three of these factors were against him. Anyone facing the whole world right now? Yeah, I can tell you. You know, sometimes it's like the whole world is against you. Your boss in the office, your boss in the office is making inappropriate moves. You can't report to HR because that will be the end of the job. If you leave that job, no means of livelihood anymore. No survival. I'm speaking directly to someone here. It's a lie on your facing in the wrong place, wrong condition, in a pit. It's like, where do I go? And you know, above all things, that you are not supposed to accept his inappropriate proposal. You know you cannot afford to fall. You know you cannot afford to live that life, to give in. That's what we're here to do. That's what we're here to understand. The worst possible foe, that's the thing you have dreaded the most. That's like the lion. I mean, for different of us, people have different lions. You know, for someone, it may just be dealing with one health challenge. Do you know what it means when all of a sudden a simple biological function begins to fail? You're just looking at yourself and say, is this me? Is this really happening to me? And then you check. You, 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 you have no reason. In fact, there's no reason. They ask you, do you smoke? You say no. Do you drink? You say no. Are you diabetic? You say no. You have high blood pressure? You say no. Then they are confused. So what could be happening? You're facing your lion. They're like, we don't know why this could be, but this is it. Some people say, we don't know how we got here. That's your lion. So maybe it's a physical disease or affliction. Maybe it's one of those things. Like I said, if I were to fight a lion, I would have loved to fight a lion if I, if I lost. I mean, I'm going to make an attempt. I would like an open space. Yeah. And uh, not so open where there will be trees in case you want to start running, then you'll be using the tree to shield yourself from the lion. Yeah, no, you can't even climb because before you get this, it, will, it doesn't climb, but it will get higher than you. It will leap at you and bring you down. So you know how if someone is going to be chasing me now, the person is really big, I'll use both. You come this way, that's a kind of, not open space, no, no, you know, but not a pit definitely where I have no means of escape. Note it, the worst possible foe in the worst possible place under the worst possible circumstance. Snow numbs your fingers. I know a very <laughs> matured lady, she said she was crying at um, one of the airports in the United States because she parked at, she parked at a car park and carried her things into the trolley said between the trolley uh, sorry between the car park and the departure hall that her hand f you know frostbite and then she said this matured woman almost 50 started crying by herself at the airport and snow can blind you if the snow if sun drops on the snow and it reflects on your eyes it's going to blind you temporarily that's the snow but then you don't want all this story of Benaya. What you want to know is how did he win? Is that not so? Aha, that's where we're going. So it's to ask, who is Benaya? Remember, I said these were the last words of King David. This is the last words of a dying man. Romans 15, 4 says everything that was written, was, they were written for our benefit that we should learn, take instructions, and be encouraged by them. So anyone facing a lion here, we're going to look at Benaya and find out what, how. Who is Beniah? Some people say the victory is in his name. His name means God builds. That's his name. His father's name means God knows, Jehoiada. Fair enough. But from what we've just read, Bible doesn't give us everything. It expects us to be able to look at these situations and then find out the truth out of them. But when we read this, they told us three things that Benaiah did. And it was as though he just did them like this. He just did them like this. Why? Anyone has an idea? You know, I like being very interactive in my meetings. Anyone give me any idea? What's your name, ma'am? 
Yes. What's your name? I can't hear you. So you be, you're from River State. Yes, I love those names. What does it mean? Sorry, I can't hear you. Heaven is beautiful. You're so correct that we can't even describe it. That's why they say streets of gold. So tell me, what do you think? What was my question, Seth? What was my question? What was I asking? Ah. Aha. Uh -huh. He just went. So they were both in the pit, himself and the lion, on a snowy day. Then he killed the lion and continued his journey. What do you think happened? How? Sorry? He said, she said, I think he had the help of the Holy Spirit. Okay. How? The Holy Spirit empowers you to do things you ordinarily cannot do. Good answer. Who else has an answer for me? Is that a date on a CD? Where's a date on this house today? Where is she? Uh -huh. Share. You want to say something? Um, so I think that he can only go in and do it if it's a lifestyle that he's had in the past. Game five. So like, like, like David and Goliath. That's it. He said he could only do it if he has it as a lifestyle. The guy kills lions. That's who he is. That situation is not what made him know how to kill lion. He's a lion killer. He fights in any situation. Never let battle teach you how to fight. You must know how to fight before you meet the battle. You didn't hear me. If you allow battle to teach you something, oh, my goodness, it will wallop you. It will play with you like table tennis ball. So what do you do? You have to train yourself. You know, I, I had a very interesting time in university. I, we, we had a schedule. And, and so I, I just devised one means because I don't like reading for exams. I hardly read for exams. So what I did was understanding myself, you know, those ones people read overnight. I don't do that. If I have exam tomorrow morning, I won't read beyond 7 p.m. tonight so I can rest well. And tomorrow morning, I won't read. I'll just go to the exam hall. One day, I went to the exam hall. I had only my pain. And then I had my cosmate. He was wondering if I was doing the exam. I said, yes. He said, where are my books? I sent the hostel. He, was, he didn't say anything. He was just imagining he's not reading. Because there are some people who read into the exam until they tell them, take your books off. But, so everyone needs to find their style. I found my style. My first semester in school, I went to be following them. They would go and read all night. I would stay with them, oh, so that it wouldn't be as if this is university. I was just coming in. I went to follow their style. It was my worst semester in the university. But once I went back to my rhythm, I don't have to go to reading room. So what I will do is I will read what the lecturer is going to teach. So I already have an idea. And then when he comes, I am going to listen to him attentively. And then when he leaves, I am going back to read again. Then I will know. So when I get to the exam hall, I don't have to read because I already what? Know it. And so when we did exams, a lot of our exams were actually application. That means that if Pastor Totung needs to take values, his values are going to be different from mine because the question tells you, take your values, do this, do that. His answer and mine are never going to be the same because we took different values anyway, just like with everyone. But at the end of the day, my lecturer is looking at, did he understand the process? Did he follow the process? So that one, you can't even say you are copying from anybody. Do you understand? So if you do not know, you can't pass in that school. You can't pass that course because everything is application. Benaiah was always going to face lion. Remember, these are the last words of David, a dying man. Why will a dying man leave this for us? He didn't tell us about the, the temple he wanted to build that Lord did not allow him to build. 
He didn't tell us all the materials he left. He didn't tell us about his wealth. He was telling us about certain things. What I shared with what broke, uh, sorry, Holy Trinity was those his three who went into the enemy camp in Bethlehem and got him water. But for you today, I've brought you a word. It's a great year we're going into. How do you thrive in this year? It's called adaptation. And then the other part of it called evolution is that, you know the reasons we don't die out of malaria every like they used to die. You know, in those days, slaves, a lot of them died. Once they had malaria, they threw them up because they would die anyway. It's evolution. It's evolution. So what is evolution is when your lifestyle, you know, takes you after certain generations, right? You now have in your genes, there are certain things that are natural to your genetic composition. Every one of us here, our life is written in our genome. There are certain people that will never be sick. That's why you see some traditions, there are some cultures, they will tell you they don't have a record of anyone who has certain kinds of illnesses, only because they have evolved. It's called evolution. Have you seen our children, how they manipulate phones these days? Yeah, because we use a bit of that technology, but for them, it's normal. I had to learn how to use a smartphone. My granddaughter is four years. She doesn't know, she doesn't learn it. She knows it. It's, she, that's evolution for that generation. I had to learn. I had to do this. I passed on to my daughter. My daughter became master. Maud, now her daughter, who is four, a two-year-old doesn't need to know how to use. We just bought this TV. It's a smart TV. For me to go to YouTube on the TV, I'll go to the menu. Then I'll start scrolling down. This girl just came to the house one day. One place, she just pointed and he went to YouTube. I, it was then I realized that YouTube was on the remote. You know, she doesn't know how to read, but she knows how to put cocoa when she wants to search. And she doesn't know how to read. She's only four. So she charges her tablet with my charger when she comes to the house. And... She'll go and check. And then I'll like, Inyolua, what's there? She said, 71%. She'll leave it. She, doesn't, she cannot count 1 to 100, though. But she knows percentage. She knows that at 40, if I when it's 12, she quickly goes to charge. And I'm like, I asked one day, I asked her mom, can she count 1 to 100? They said, for where? But she can tell me 79%. She can tell me it's 82%. She knows all the percentages. Once she sees 100%, she unplugs and continues. What's happening? Evolution. If you don't set it up properly right now, guess what? Oh, your generations after will suffer. That's why you need to adapt today to power. You need to kill lions now. Don't wait for battle to kill lions. I was so happy that you guys are fasting. You guys are praying. That's where it is. Prayer. Prayer. Prayer is our life. I don't struggle to pray, but I think maybe generations ahead would have really struggled to pray because it wasn't in them. But because I needed to adapt, it became part of my life. Part of my life. I, will, I fight lions daily. I'm in a snow daily. I'm locked in a pit with the enemy daily. I cannot let that situation teach me. I've gone through challenges, but I must keep my joy. I keep my position. I can't allow you to make me angry. I will never let you rule me. Benaiah killed a lion in a pit on a snowy day because he's a lion killer. Who are you? I asked the question, who are you? Who are you? We're being very practical and real here. If you were Banaya, what would have been the outcome of that fight? If you were Benaya, what would have been the outcome of that battle? We need to be strong this year. Pastor Shaya, thanks so much. You were just seeing the words. And um, where's our lead singer? He was, he was just telling us. Marvelous. That was marvelous. Yeah. You know? Yeah, marvelous. That was marvelous. You know? 
There was something he said. There was one of those songs. Which one was that? You know, God, truth is that God is too faithful. He never fails. Oh, he will never fail you. Never. But will you not fail yourself? You see? Because that, why, we, why are we looking at Benaiah today? Because you will face lion. I won't lie to you. I am not, I don't manipulate. I don't need you to be anything other than what God wants you to be. I don't look for church members. Yes, we will go out to continually win souls, definitely. But the numbers of church or no church, that's my own is to do my work, and I will continue to do my work. I will stand before God, and I will do my work. And that's what I've brought to you. God is looking for lion killers. I was telling them, I said, if you know how long it took us to get this place, you'd be amazed. The next property, we've been trying to get it, but he doesn't want to give to church. And I was asking them today, I said, what is this about not giving to church, not giving to church? And I was telling them how one, um, what's it called, one former governor of Lagos, when he was governor, said he went from, from um, he said from the toll gate, from Lekki, all the way he was going to Badari in Aja. Then he said, he told them, he had a congregation of pastors who had come to visit him. He was telling them how many churches he counted on the route all the way to where he was going. And then they were telling me, sort of, you know, instigating the church, like, oh, we have too many churches. So I said, he has time. That convoy, the way the governor's convoy moves, he was counting churches. <laughs> he has no work again. Then his churches he was counting. Okay, fair enough. Let him count church. I said, did you guys ask him that between where he started to count church and where he was going, did you ask him how many secondary schools, government secondary schools on the route? None. One. Just one. At Badori. I, asked, I said, did you guys ask him how many general hospitals? Did you guys ask him, okay, let's forget all of this. At least road, Unko. Between where he was and where he was going, <laughs> what are the options for the citizens in this whole area. From that an axis of about two million people having only one road, not in one year, not in two years, and we say we have started a new road. Since I came to Lagos, I've known Lagos, over 56, almost 70, some, uh, over 60 years, only one road takes you that way. What kind of a government is that? And then you are counting churches. Did the church ask you for land? No. Did the church come to ask you to donate money? No. You are counting churches. You didn't count your own work. But I see that's Nigeria. How do we thrive in this place? We have to adapt. Are you twins? Are you twins? I thought I was seeing two of you. What's your name? Amanda. And you are Damilola. Andrea. Wow. I was looking, I said, ah, ah, is it the water that I drank? <laughs> <laughs> so this year, we all have to be strong. Nobody will fight for you. If you're waiting for anyone to fight for you, we'll finish our battle before we'll come for your own. It's natural. It's natural. Honestly. So that's what we're doing. We're trying to make you strong. Benaya took on lion on a snowy day inside a pit because he kills lion if you were to face any challenge right now god forbid the doctor sent you a report and says it's cancer is that the end of the world Never. but you you must have defeated malaria you must have defeated other things before you can say the same god who will help me that's what david said when david faced goliath you know, he knew that by his strength, he will never be able to prevail against David, uh, sorry, Goliath. Then he told Saul something. He said, you know, a bear came at me. I slew it. The lion came. I slew it. He said, so this one won't be different. What he was trying to say, the same God, that's what he said. He said, the same God who delivered me. If I was, when I saw that scripture, because when I read it and all the way, They've been explaining it to me. I thought that David can just see lion. If I can be walking past and one lion is going that way, he'll pursue the lion and tear it. 
He said, God delivered me from the lion and the bear. He said, the same God who delivered me is the one. So his trust is not in his physical power, but just like you said, it was the Holy Spirit who, is, who empowers us. So it doesn't matter the name of the ailment they call. You just know that the Lord who delivered me yesterday will deliver me today. And then you will take it on. We used to say something that when people come to us and then they are crying, sometimes, okay, you check. Why are they crying? Sometimes because they've given up. Why will you give up? When you face a situation, we take it on. My daughter was having some challenge in the office. She just sent me what? She said, Daddy, please send me some of those scriptures, those deadly ones. Because I need to take some, I need to take out some people. They are threatening me. So their existence is a threat to me. <laughs> we, both of us can survive in this same office. Some pod, somebody will need to go. <laughs> and it's not me, I'm not ready. So let's do the battle. It's always a battle of the gods. That's what David said. Goliath was smart. He said, I will tear you and I will throw you like carcass. He was trying to say that I will make you a feast to my God. And David now provoked God. He said, the gods of the armies of Israel whom you defy. It's a battle of the gods, but how ready are you? You will face your lion. If you are not facing it now, you will face it tomorrow. Don't wait for lion before you learn how to kill lion. That's my simple message. 2024, it's a great year, and it can also be a terrible year. If you look at the optics, it's not looking good at all. I can give you statistics. The economy is in shambles, no doubt. But it's inside that economy we moved into this place. So where do you want to move to in spite of the economy? What do you, how do you want to grow your business in spite of the economy? Or your career in spite of the economy? Let Naira be... 10,000 to a dollar. How is that going to affect you? Do you understand? So it's not exchange rate. It's not whether you have the best government person or the worst government person. It's me and Jehovah. Don't judge God by yourself or the environment. Judge, if you want to judge God, judge him by himself. He said, I found none to swear by. So I swore by myself. Who is he that says, and it comes to pass, when the Lord God has not commanded? It's his words are commands. We're looking for Benayas. We're looking for Benayas. I'm so excited with those of you here staying with us at this time. Oh, this place, we will finish it up. I keep telling people that if I don't have faith, I have experience. You see that dome where you guys came from? If I tell you the story of that place, you won't believe that that's the same place. There was nothing there. We started just like this. Pidot, one day. So the contractor, we gave money for the whole building, built only foundation. He said, money has finished. Then he ran away. And then we started. Then one day, we said, oh, we needed to do the roof. So we did the roof. Then we put walls. Then the church next door was disturbing, so we now put walls. It was getting hot. We needed ACs. We now put ACs. Then we said, we can paint this place. And we didn't know so much to do. We made a dastardly mistake. We went to tile the floor. Someone just said, ah, let's tile now. We, did, we tile the floor. But for sound, tiles are not good. And so that's why that facility struggles with sound a lot. You know? But we know better now. And then one day, we faced the Freedom Center. And look at that whole place today. When we moved into that place, there was nothing, no property in that whole axis. But look at, it brought in the glory. So I've seen it over and over. When we bought where the potter's house is in Suleri, it was nothing. But look at it now. So this one, piece of cake. It will be done. Amen. Definitely so. You people will be the ones complaining of cold one of these days. Amen. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. So just enjoy the heat for now. <laughs> I'm telling you, I remember once one of our senior pastors told us, they said, Pio, has this air conditioner become punishment? We were so hot, but when we started blasting ACs, people were, uh -uh, they were coming with duvet. <laughs> so yes, these are early days. It's a process. It's a process. 
What was this place? It was a bush. My daughter and Adeton were with us when we came here to look at the place. Then we went to Milverton. We're trying to also look at somewhere for HTL. So both of them were gossiping in a car. They say, uh, it's TWB now. They gave them bush. Why are they giving HTL a proper place? That's what they told us. But they stepped their feet here. Look at what we've turned here to. Does this thing speak to you? Yes. We want to turn lives from what we saw in September to what we are building here. I always tie my life to projects like this. So what I'm saying is that I have some projects, personal projects that are like where you've planted bush. So I, I stop here on my own. On Monday last week I was here. I just come to see the development going on so I can apply it to my personal life. I'm looking at what TWB is doing. I'm also saying from where they're coming, see where they've gone. I know how much money, Holy Trinity, sorry. I know how they got that place. I must applaud you guys. You know, TWB paid for this place without a loan. Yeah. Who is the next person who is just going to say, you know what? What do they need? I'm going to sort it out. It's not about you. It's first of all, what is in your heart for God? What sacrifice can I make? Someone bought us this. Someone paid for this. Someone paid for that. It's not because they had all the monies. Oh, no. But they understand the concept of let me make a sacrifice. Fire will come from heaven. You don't wait to have before you give. No, you don't. You don't. We are going to rough it through for these next few days, few seasons. But then, in the process, God is strengthening us. Out of this house, we are going to have Benayas. Oh, yes. We're going to take on lions. And it's going to just be normal. You know? So, he said it. He said, no, I'm sorry. Shaya said something. That is a lifestyle for him. Some of us are struggling to pray right now. But it can become a lifestyle. You know? When you see Pastor Lovett praying, by the way, so the Gethsemane program is on, on when? On Friday 19th. That's this week, Friday. So me, I mean, I have the benefit. I'm always there. So I told the Holy Trinity, I told the men, I said, do you want to pray for six hours? You, will you like to pray for six hours? Come. I'll be there. If they say, ah, it's for women, tell them that I'm with P.O. So all the men here, I'm inviting you. Some of you have never prayed in fact, they were clapping one day at the dome when they heard announcement that it was a full vigil six hours. Some people have never prayed more than six minutes in their lives. But prayer, it's not, you know how you, it, if you don't drive very cool, you can never know how to drive. If you don't pray, you can't know how to pray. Eh, it's not a gift of the spirit or prayer. <laughs> you walk your way into it. To kill a lion is not a fruit of the spirit. It's not a gift of the spirit. It's something you walk into. These are the ways. It's an opportunity. Everyone is going to be praying there. We will join them to pray. If sleep catches us more, we will stand up, we will walk around. But at least we will tick our box. I prayed six hours. Do you know if you pray six hours, do you think that things will be just normal again? Definitely not. Definitely not. I can tell you the stories of prayer. Oh my goodness, my time is up. But let me just leave you with this. One day, my, my, uh, my second daughter, my two older girls, they went to university in Malaysia. I don't know that I've shared this here. But my second daughter, she is very, I don't, I don't know, but, you know, so because she always has her elder sister with her, she doesn't really care, you know. And so when they get to immigration, my eldest daughter is always holding the two passports. So she would just walk through. When they got back to Nigeria, my eldest daughter said, they banned her from coming back to Malaysia. She was 300 level, four months to enter final year. So they have banned her from entering Malaysia. We said, uh -uh, how? I asked her, I said, how? She said, I don't know. <laughs> now what had happened is she lost her passport. She didn't even tell me. It was when they were supposed to come back home for Christmas that she realized that she didn't have a passport. And the Malaysian law says they have to um, renew their visas every six months. So apparently she missed that six-month renewal because she didn't find her passport and she didn't send it. 
So we sent her to the Nigerian embassy and we said, oh, they'll give you, worked it out. They gave her a passport to come. And I said, when you get here, then we'll also work out the social visa for you to go back and then you can apply for. We just thought it was that ordinary. So she got back. I sent her passport to Abuja. They put her visa. And then she left back from Malaysia. We we're waiting to hear from them that, oh, we've landed, we've landed. Not a word. Then after some time, my elder daughter called us to say, they didn't let her in. I said, what do you mean they didn't let her in? He said, I did that thing I was talking about. They said they are deporting her. <sighs> and they banned her for three years. This is somebody who is entering final year in four months. Where are we going to start from? All the monies we've paid is dollars we're paying. Over. What will happen? So. I have a friend who is a professor of medicine. He knows the government people, so we were communicating. The school, they were trying their own part. They were doing everything. They asked me, do this letter, I will do. Get this letter from so-and-so. Government, we will do. We were giving them everything they wanted. 24 hours passed. In fact, they said, except for flights that don't come every day, that's the only reason you can be there for 24 hours. So they were just so sure that there's no way. They are strict. They are so strict with their laws. 24 hours passed, and then 48 hours passed. We're going back and forth, back and forth. They say it's a miracle that she's still in Malaysia. By now, she should have been deported. Later, she was telling us that everybody that came to meet her in the detention left her there because they were just deporting anyone. But she was still there. Now, by the third day, we were still going back and forth, 72 hours. So Pastor Lovett said something. He said, please check me into a hotel. Let me be praying while you are facing them out here. If they need anything, you are dealing with them. We said, okay. So I put her in one hotel, and then she prayed all through. Then in the morning, she called me. She said, please, can you come and pick me? I said, yeah. She said, I heard she has been released. So I said, thank God. Then I picked her. This was about 10 a.m. Now, Malaysia is seven hours ahead of us. So when I picked her, as we were driving off, less than 15 minutes after I picked her, my daughter calls, my eldest daughter calls again and says, Daddy, I'm so sorry. I couldn't do it. They're arranging, the flight is here. She's coming back. The school apologized to me. They said, let her come back, and then we'll take it up. My friend, the professor, stopped picking my calls because he didn't know what to say to me. 15 minutes after... I picked Pastor Lovett after we heard they had released her. But you know what? We didn't go back to continue praying. We had finished praying. We just moved on with thanking God for what he has done. We were going. The same person who called me a few minutes ago called me again and said, Daddy, she's with me. So my daughter graduated. Imagine we learned how to pray because of that battle. Imagine it was when we were facing that lion that we started looking for skills to take on lion. We were already in the snow. We were in a pit. Imagine we didn't know how to pray. Imagine we had no spiritual understanding. We were not discerning. Imagine what will happen. We'll have lost that money. She will have come back. We don't know what the trajectory of her life will have been from then on. But by the grace of God, she finished appropriate time and did what she had to do. Where is the Benaya here? Any Benaya or anyone who wants to be a Benaya? There's an immediate lion before us. How do we finish this project? We're going to finish it. I, that I know is the word of the Lord. You see, when God speaks, I never fret anymore. It was the Lord that brought us here. So we called it, we said the temple on temple road. <laughs> you know, we're looking at, you see the children don't have a space. Some people are not here with us because we don't have a proper church for children yet. So they go and drop their children so they stay in one of the other expressions. So we need to get somewhere for the children. They told me they cost a few days ago. And I said, we will get it. How? I don't know. Will we? Oh, yes. 
Is the money in the bank? Oh, no. Will it come? Certainly so. When? I can't promise you today. I don't know. But are we getting the place? Absolutely. Why? It's a, my lifestyle. It's my lifestyle. It's a lifestyle of faith. When we bought the property in Sule, I was pricing. The man told me, he said, they gave us price 350 million then. This was in 2010, 2011. He said 350 million. I said 150. I was pricing as if I was buying meat. <laughs> the man said, Union Homes offered the family 300 million. They turned it down. I said, well, I'm not Union Homes. When I checked with Pastor Tony, Pastor Tony said, oh, let's get it. Once he tells me something, I, you know, he's a prophet. I don't know how, but I just know we will get it. Once he told me that, Pio, let's get this place. When we told TWB, they even said, oh. I said, okay. Then he told me, he said, Pio, force it on them. Don't give them option. So I called Phoenix. I called all their pastors. And I said, Tony, I said, we're taking the place. Because the man has spoken. So we went, when I was talking to the man, the man said, hmm, Pastor, I said, me that I'm pricing 150 million. If you turn me upside down, coins will not follow. Then he said something very powerful. He said, if you said anything contrary, I won't consider you a man of God. He meant that I know this has to be by faith. That's what he was trying to say. Where's your faith level? Where's your faith? That's what I'm talking about, Phoenix. It's the faith level. We never get tired. We never get weary. We will finish this project. Generations after us will benefit from that. Many other people will come. They will benefit from that. Benaiah took on a lion in a snowy day inside a pit. I don't know what you are taking on right now. As TWB, we are taking on quite a bit. But I want to pray. But before I pray, I'm going to ask for something. Next week, Mr. Apple is here, right? Is it next week? What's happening next week? All right, so on the 28th, Ms. Rappu is here. I did something the last time. Some people gave me their names and their numbers and their emails. I carry it everywhere I go, everywhere I go, because I love TWB. So I just praying. And I did say then that the only time I will call you or send you a message if the Lord is giving me a direct word for, for you. So for those of you who give me your names and your details and you're saying, I, I've not heard from pastor, is that I'm just praying for you. And I said then, I said, don't give me prayer requests because your prayer requests can limit God. Can limit God. Don't give me prayer requests. Just leave me to be praying. So I'm going to ask, apart from our first timers, we'll talk to you later, but I'm going to ask the same thing. If you know that I didn't get your name, and your number the last time that we were squatting now we are here i'm still praying for you guys i'm still just interceding for you if i don't have and i promised you something i said i will never share your data with anyone but let me confess i shared it once because twb came and said oh they needed data and because they're your pastors i just ask them promise me it's only going to be for twb work they said yes that's why i did that but from now on i will never give you any data again okay so please if i don't have personally don't have your name your details just get a small sheet of paper write your name your email and your phone number just put it there just in case i need to reach you i'll collect it you know i'll take it with me i'll add it to the others i only will come back to you if i have a direct word if god says go to shoebi and tell her this that's when i will come back to you other than that you won't hear from me just leave me to be praying but in the meantime two things i want to do and we will close like i said we're trying to finish up this place the pastors don't want me to talk about money anymore because they said They've stretched you guys and i do agree but i'm not even worried i'm saying that if you understand if you have any strategy how we can you know um finish up this place we need to raise funds we need to take the, one of the other properties and i know once we do this do that this middle one will open for us 
our expansion is just about beginning i've seen all this before and i am very excited at the next time that i will come here so i'm going to take your names if i don't have your name but please let me tell you what you will do for me in return let me tell you what you will do for me in return in two weeks so mr Rapp will be here in two weeks i want you to be able to bring at least one person to church on that day 28 is not far two weeks bring at least one person to church one so that's my condition i will pray for you definitely whether you do that or not but it would be nice for you to also do for me in return there's something called unrequited love it's not a nice place if i'm doing for you please also help me do something we want when she comes in she sees a beautiful house if she takes report back to pastor tony guess what pastor tony will come you guys want to see pastor tony here yes yeah, so let's make him come let's make him come hey, hey everyone gotten if you if i don't have your details please um ju ju just give it to the when you finish writing benga can you help me collect from those who have finished writing i want to go with them i'm leaving now i'm leaving about now i'll give you 30 seconds men remember to join me at gethsemane and like they said there are buses there are buses from um th th there's going to be a bus from a bus stop facing lekki there's going to be one bus at um, um what's it called sule yes at the potter's house there's also one from ikeja that's a cornell filling station opposite um opposite ikeja hospital there's one there and i think jack on there also so and i'm sure there are numbers for you to reach if you need anything or any support okay now we pray now we pray can you rise up to your feet play for me I, I i want us to just get some things out of the way maybe you are dealing with some lions right now so on your own you're not able to take them out i want us to join strength i want us to join strength i want us to join strength so i want you to hold someone i normally won't do this but i'm also here in my spirit that there are some people their lions is such a way that i i need to be able to see you if you know let's just begin to pray just bow your heads and begin to pray okay let me just hold on hold on let me tell you something some years back that's why i'm so i'm so grateful to god that we have a location where we can always stop by some years back there was a lady she sent us a testimony she said i am the woman with the issue of blood that the lord healed so the song we're singing the one you saved has come to worship you she said this woman she will have been in her 50s then I'm sure she's over 60 now she said that when it's her monthly period that the amount of blood if her, her husband abandoned her because of her situation she has two or three lovely daughters you know she said that's what she's been dealing with and then she's tired that she will use how many sanitary pads over and over she doesn't go out because she knows that no amount of sanitary parts can hold whatever was happening to her then she said one particular day was a tuesday church had no service she said she came to church she entered the place and she just went to the stage like this and she said she just told god i've come to meet you today and she laid there she said she doesn't know how long or whatever This was 2018 till today that's the end of that story so her testimony was the one you saved has come to worship you so in my spirit i hear that some people are facing such i don't know whether it's that particular lion or something but there's you want to also sit with god today and say 
it's you that I've come to meet. And I hope you didn't come to church to meet man, but God. But you know where your situation is. You are facing your own lion. I want you to just come on the stage. I want you to come, take, just take any position on the stage. Just come, take any position on this stage. It's you and God right now. You're in a pit. It's a snowy day. Just come, just come. It's you and God right now. Oh, mother, boss, I can see the heart of God. I can see tears in the Father's eyes. I can see it. I see tears in the Father's eyes. The Lord is crying. The Lord is in tears because of someone here. Just take any position anywhere on this stage. You haven't come to me. You have come to God. And I want you to begin to speak to your Father right now. I want you to begin to speak to your Father right now. I want you to begin to speak to God, your Father. I want you to enter into his embrace right now. The Lord is here. The Lord is here. That was what this whole fight was about. So that we will struggle with this service, but we choose not to struggle. Because I know what God is doing today. I can see it already. I know what is this. Something is happening in this house. Can I have someone play the drums for me? And I need a singer. I need someone to help me sing. I surrender all. Can I have a singer? I want you to surrender that lion here. I want you to surrender, first of all, your own life. I surrender to you. All right, no, not that surrender. I surrender. Yeah. I surrender. I want you to surrender to I surrender. And I want you to know the power I of God. Want to know you more. I want you to know the power I of God to today. Know you more. I want you to surrender I all. Surrender. surrender your life. Surrender your sin. Surrender, surrender that sin that that all that you be getting you. Surrender that relationship. You surrender it today. I want to know. Surrender. Inspiration in this place. I want to know. I want you to show your father that you mean it. I want to know. Uh, your power. Power. What is that I mountain before the river there? What is that mountain before the river there? What is that mountain before you? What is that fire before you? Le patu sapa amale. I want to know. Decision. The Lord will give you decision. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way.
Lord, have your way. Your children are looking up unto you. Come on, Lord. Lord, do it now. Have your way. Oh, in him. Like a rushing wind, oh Lord, come upon this house. Oh, like a rushing wind, let your power be made manifest. Like the adults. All over. All over. Just a keyboard, just a keyboard. Let every other sound remain silent. Just a keyboard. Just a keyboard. Just a keyboard. The Lord is speaking. You, you, you're hearing something. You're receiving word. You're receiving direction. You're receiving word. You're receiving direction something clear so clear so clear you can hear so clear it's not about pastor today it's about you and god your father so clear it's so clear it's so clear ah it's so clear 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 now you are thinking that I'm the one thinking it. No, you are not the one thinking it. He's the one speaking to you. He's the one speaking to you. Someone needs to go and make another test with the doctor tomorrow. The result has changed. The result has changed. That result has changed. I don't know what they said, but I know that result has changed. Please go and make and run a test again tomorrow. The result has changed. Oh, Baraboko Supan Taniyade. Ah, there's, I feel for someone here because there's going to be an estrangement, but it's for your good. It's going to hurt you, but it's for your good. It's for your good because the Lord will also comfort. You're on a journey that's going nowhere, but the Lord is taking you and putting you on the journey that will go. But he needs to separate you first. So there's going to be a separation. It's going to be like a forceful estrangement. So you, you, it, it may hurt you, but then you will find comfort in so swiftly. And then you will, once you let go of this current hold you have, the other will appear. The other will appear. I just want you to begin to thank God. Let's give, let's thank Him. Let's give us some songs. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We give glory to God. Yes. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Let's give Him thanks as you begin to go back glory to your seats now. To God yes. Give Him thanks God. on your journey back. Just know that I came one way, but I'm going back God. another way. Been an awesome time of fellowship with you. you know, I, I know that there are one or two people who would like to speak to myself or Pastor Lovett personally at some point later. Um, you can always talk to Pastor Dotun Phoenix, our beloved Pastor Bolanley, and anyone. They will be able to arrange a meeting. I just, you know, you guys are our heart. We love you, TWB. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you. Just begin to thank the Lord for the deposit is made in your heart today through his son, his battle axe. 
his warrior, his general, is deposited in your heart something that would last you through the year. You will climb on that word, you will ride, you will fly with that word, that deposit in your heart today. Father, we thank you for P.O. and his wife. We bless your name, for indeed they are instruments of honor in your house and in your hands. And all of their days they will remain instruments of praise unto you. Father, we thank you for the advancement of the kingdom that they are causing their eyes to see in their generation. And Father, as they continue following hard after you, they will see many more testimonies, many more, causing them to always, always have a song to praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Yes, please be seated. I want to welcome some people very special to our hearts this afternoon. And um, I'll use this word in Ruth 1 verse 6 when I'm talking about them. Ruth 1 6, KJV version says, Then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. So you're here today, I don't know what you had heard, but I trust God that you had heard that the power of God is at work in this place and that there are testimonies overflowing in this place and that God is doing great and mighty things in this place and with these people. So you're here today, it's your first time fellowshipping with us. You're in the right place the house of the Most High. You have come to the God who enables and gives testimonies without measure. The, over, the God of the overflow. That's one of the names I call him. You're here today. It's your first time. We love you. We want to welcome you in a special way. And so at this time, just take your bag, your Bible, and rise. We have a special reception planned for you. We're happy to see you and we know we know if you're looking for a house to settle in you can settle here i like to tell people in three months you should see and indeed you will see the handwork of god in your life because like obedidium who harbored the ark of god in his house and saw results in three months spend three months here you you will indeed see the hand of god just continue to follow hard after him thank you for joining us and um, we have a vehicle this is your license plate number please help us you are blocking the pastor from leaving eky 365 gj eky 365 gj it's a lexus jeep so please help us pastor is on, the, on his way to another assignment hmm? he, he was here on time we love that so we want him to be on time to his next assignment praise the lord thank you for helping us to repack uh, if you missed the offering you came after the offering um, you're still able to give please just help us put the account numbers on the screen we welcome you to give your offering as we close the service now in closing the service in closing the service there's something i want to share with us i i trust that you know we have your details because if you've been following us on the past seven days this journey we have been with the lord it's been an awesome one and as p dot said each word that came every day it was relevant it was like hammer with a nail on the dots on the point so I'm just going to close this service with some excerpts of the word that came for today as we wait on the Lord this season. And it's from Genesis 17, verse 6 to 7. Genesis 17, 6 to 7, in the NLT version says, I will make you extremely fruitful. Your descendants will become many nations and kings will be among them 
I will confirm my covenant with you and your descendants after you from generation to generation. This is the everlasting covenant. I will always be your God and the God of your descendants after you. He doesn't lie. He says what he means and he means what he says. This was the word he gave to Abraham and today as descendants of Abraham West, that word is still alive. That word is still delivering. That word is still performing. So as we go into your, as you go into your week, to the rest of the month, the rest of the year, we are going to take some affirmations concerning this covenant, this everlasting covenant. I will always be your God and the God of your descendants after you. And like I mentioned, because we are Abraham's descendants, because Galatians 3 verse 29 tells us, if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to this promise. So please rise to your feet. We are taking three declarations as we close the service. And you will say after me, the first one, I am a seed of Abraham, an heir to the promise. I am extremely fruitful in all my endeavors this year. And this is in alignment with God's promise for me. All of God's promises to me this year are yes and amen. Praise the Lord. Have a very fruitful week. In Jesus' name.